Hello, um, welcome to Introduction to Philosophy, Phil 101, Section 3, CRN 33952, um, College of Arts and Sciences, Department of Philosophy, Summer 2016. It's an online class. Um, I'm Grant Yoakum. I'll be your instructor for this class, and um, much of the class is actually going to come in terms of this video material. Um, these videos are required. I can't stress that enough. Um, frequently I have semesters go by and I notice that students are not actually ac accessing the video material. Um, effectively, that's the same as not coming to class. Um, for all of the assignments in this class, um, for all of the important information in this class, it, generally I deliver that information in YouTube video format. Um, you'll find links to all of these videos on Moodle. Um, this one I I've emailed to you, but nonetheless. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do today is go over the syllabus. I've printed a copy. Um, there is a copy posted to Moodle as well. And the first thing you'll find is my name, um, and the next thing you'll find is my email address. Please email me if you are nervous about any of the material, if there's content that you're not understanding, if I'm not clear on any of the aspects of the course, um, it, please just email me and solve a problem before it becomes a problem. Uh, because otherwise, well, then we have problems, right? So. Um, I'm doing office hours by appointment uh, this semester since I only teach online and here's a funny little twist about me. I'm actually in Canada right now um, where I live. I commute to Oakland University to teach, but um, right now I'm telecommuting. I'm happy to uh, make the trip across the border uh, and come and meet you to discuss the material uh, if you feel that that is an absolute necessity. In fact, I have um, uh, an office, I'm told, in MSC 6. 42. Um, uh, so I, I've been teaching online for a little while, so I've not actually, it's been on campus in a little while, but nonetheless, I have an office. It's there for uh, these purposes, and I'd be happy if you feel that you absolutely need an on-campus meeting, I'd be happy to do that. Um, otherwise, uh, for the most part, if you need an appointment where you want to discuss the material, I'd be happy to discuss these meetings through Skype. Um, I've done this for a number of semesters now, and uh, there have been very few problems. So um, th that is uh, largely how we'll be meeting um, for anything that we can't discuss through email. Um, so this course meets virtually, but there is a schedule. You'll have to keep up with it, um, and you're best not to fall behind, especially in a summer semester, uh, where uh, the material is go going to come at you very, very quickly. It is dense material. Um, you're going to be reading. Uh, you're going to be viewing a lot of these videos, and you're going to be thinking really, really hard. It's philosophy. There's no way around um, any of that. Well, it's in an in-person class. We could just have a discussion, but the videos do that, um, and fill that role um, fine. So um, there's a lot of boilerplate on this first page of the syllabus that I'm required to um, required to put there, and that actually frames how I get to design these courses. Um, so the course catalog description, which I assume you found if you found the course, um, is it's a study of the main types of problems of Western philosophy. Readings are chosen to illustrate the development of Western thought from the ancient Greeks to the present, um, offered every semester, semester, satisfies the gen ed requirement and the Western civilization law, knowledge exploration area. So um, that's pretty general. So it's, it's going to be a historical introduction to Western philosophy, and we will start with the ancient Greeks and move to, well, pretty close to the present in philosophical terms. It's about 130 years ago um, is the most recent work that we'll be reading. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so uh, the learning objectives that I have to uh, pay attention to um, are listed here as well. Um, so I'm introducing you to important historical texts in philosophy. Um, and uh, right over here, I have your pile of um, historical texts, which I'll go over in a minute. 
Um, so students, tax, tax students, I'll be introducing you to those. Um, that is to know important philosophical ideas of European and American culture, um, to show students how philosophical theories have developed over time. So that's the historical portion of this and um, have developed over time, the term is dialectically. I mean, Socrates was in dialogue with Plato, who was in dialogue with Aristotle, who is explicitly cited uh, by Thomas Hobbes. Um, Kierkegaard mentions both Socrates and Plato explicitly in his works, and then Nietzsche sees himself as sort of the anti-Socrates. So um, we will be uh, discussing a series of six theorists who are in dialogue with one another and separated by millennia. So, um, so it's, we'll do that. Um, boo, 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 to develop a student's facility in using logic to analyze and evaluate philosophical arguments. I take that to be one of the most important goals of this class. Basically, um, I don't know. I, I have conversations with colleagues of mine, and I try to find the intrinsic value of working through this. It's if we treat these arguments as though they have intrinsic value, they become sort of puzzles to be solved, right? Um, really, the extrinsic value of engaging with these texts is to sharpen our minds and uh, learn how to engage with these arguments, analyze these arguments, critique these arguments, and build arguments of our own. All right? So that's, that's the interesting thing that we'll be doing. And how do we do that? Well, um, it, the last learning objective here is um, to develop students' facility in the clear presentation of arguments in writing. So that means it's got to be a writing-intensive course. So um, that will be reflected in the assignments. Um, these, these, these learning outcomes um, will be reflected in just about everything that we do. So we're grounded in a historical analysis of the main ideas and figures that, um, and it, mind you, as many books as this seems to be, it's I had to be very, very delicate when choosing small sections of these books uh, for you to engage with, right? Because we've got uh, more than two millennia of material to engage with here. So I had to, it's basically, this, these are the greatest hits or my playlist of greatest hits from the history of Western philosophy. Um, I chose these texts to build sort of a conceptual arc so that you could see how the ideas develop and influence one another. And um, what we're going to be doing is engaging with, analyzing, critiquing, and evaluating these arguments. And your portion of that will be done um, via written work through assignments, through forums, um, through a large writing as large, um, it, it moderately sized writing assignment towards the end of the course. And um, hopefully at the end of it, you will be able to engage with ideas using language in writing. Right? These are these are the skills that you are here for. Right? This is how you're better off at the end of the course. Right? So um, all of these books, and you're going to go ugh, but all of these books are required and are at the, um, the Oakland University Bookstore. All right? But um, what I've been trying to do is choose fairly cheap books, like these Hackett versions are as cheap as they come because they're old translations that are off copyright. So um, this is the most economical way um, to buy a philosophical text. Um, uh, there will be six of these books. The first is Plato's Five Dialogues, in which we'll be engaging with um, two of the dialogues, the Apology and the Credo. Um, Plato's Five Dialogues, he gets the, uh, the author credit because he wrote them down, but the two dialogues we'll be engaging with are thought to be more or less maybe heroically presented, but nonetheless reportage of Socrates' position. And so uh, I'll be referring to Socrates when we study the two dialogues out of the uh, five dialogues. Plato, um, who was, in fact, historically a figure who was around and followed around Socrates and learned how to philosophize from him, 
Um, this is the Phaedrus. This is one of his later dialogues. And you will see a different position from Socrates, is, 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 that's awkward, and um, it being argued by Plato in the Phaedrus. So um, partially I choose the late dialogue, which is one of his two um, major works on love, um, because that helps me make the distinction between the earlier dialogues, which are Socratic, and these later dialogues, which employ um, theory that Socrates never argued, um, specifically um, it, metaphysics, literally after physics, the, the theories about the underlying nature of truth, epistemology, um, or theory of knowledge, or as my PhD program Taboo deforms it to, ways of knowing, right? What counts as a knowledge claim? On what basis can we be said to know? Um, Plato has an answer to that um, that's distinct from the answer offered by Socrates. And then ethics, right? Um, Socrates is going to, in a very sort of brilliant, I think, argumentative move, ground or um, substantiate an ethical position and um, that will be different right in terms of both moral psychology and in terms of of, of what it prescribes to you um, from what Plato is going to argue. Now, following that, we will move on to Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, um, which is one part self-help book. Um, it's going to present you with a bootstraps method. It's one part um, a hard philosophy um, insofar as it relies heavily on a metaphysical position um, that Aristotle, um, I'll introduce you to at the beginning of this section. Um, it's uh, one part child rearing manual because largely he's talking about the development of virtues um, and these should be instilled from a young age. So uh, part and parcel to that, it's, it's, it's one part philosophy of education um, and a generally uh, all around important philosophical text. We'll be just taking a look at uh, the first two parts in a small section of the third part of this book. I know you're nervous. Am I going to have to read all that? No, you're going to have to read... Where is it? Um, do, 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 do. About that much of it. Right, that's that's not a ton. Um, I try to keep the readings within 50 pages. As soon as I say that, I'm going to introduce you to a guy by the name of Thomas Hobbes. Um, probably the most important uh, work of uh, political philosophy that had been produced from the modern era kind of thing. So we'll be jumping from ancient to modern um, political philosophical thought in Hobbes' Leviathan. Um, and I've got to say, um, yeah, I can grab a book right here. Uh, Hobbes is talking about a, 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 what he considers to be his notion of the Commonwealth. Uh, contemporary theorists alive today still engage and actually mimic Hobbes' style and um, by the name of Hart and Gray. Um, and largely Hobbes is still sort of a pressing topic. So um, what he's going to do is provide you with an anatomy of power. Right. Um, so it's it, what we'll be engaging with is a sort of a, a, a natural scientific um, sort of account of political power in Hobbes' Leviathan here. I think it's a very interesting argument. So that's our brief sojourn in uh, modernism. And um, then I'm going to introduce you to what we call proto-existentialists. Um, it, they've been heralded as the fathers of postmodernity. Um, if you believe that there's such a thing as postmodernity, um, anyhow, uh, it, it's, I picked two of them. Right? One is Soren Kierkegaard, a religious proto-existentialist, and uh, one is Friedrich Nietzsche, who, when he died, was buried with the clergy making a note um, in the burial record. Here lies Friedrich Nietzsche, a known antichrist, right? Because he's he's famous for having claimed, though it's not he who first claimed, it's it's Hegel, but nonetheless he's famous for having claimed that God is dead, 
which is a troubling claim that we'll take a look at. So um, those will be your texts. Don't worry, we're not going through all of any of them. Um, I've picked selections from the larger works. Uh, it's largely anytime I find um, one of these kind of books, uh, what they have in them is insufficient. Plus um, this one here, uh, well, they don't give me, but I, I would assume this would be 140, 150 bucks uh, if you were buying it. Right? Um, this one's slightly cheaper, but you see, it's a thick book that's going to scare you as well. Right? So, nonetheless, um, they don't have the sections of these works that I'm looking for, and uh, then on top of that, um, they're way more expensive than the way that I've done it. So I'm trying to be a little easy on your wallet as we do textbooks. Um, you've got to read. You've got to read these books in order to engage with the conversations that we're going to have because the conversations that we're going to have are on the basis of the reading. So if you haven't read, you're not really having a conversation and it's very a broken chair, sorry, uh, very clear um, when uh, the, a student hasn't read. So um, be sure to keep up with this reading. I know it's difficult. Um, so if it's not immediately clear to you, that's not surprising at all. It, it, the task here is to engage with some difficult and challenging reading. Right, in order to increase your capacities rather than to sort of congratulate you for capacities that you already have. I mean, um, it's, I see these luminosity commercials. What have you done to expand your mind? And it's, my answer is, uh, I've read a book, right? So um, this, is, this is basically mental aerobics, trying to get you in shape, right? <laughs> and develop your capacities to engage with your life a little bit better. So um, I wrote a course description. Um, the idea is that by engaging with these philosophers, um, we become better at asking the questions that are central to being human beings. I give you some examples there. Um, and by engaging with the questions that are essential to being human beings, we thereby become better human beings. Um, so I've selected six um, that build an arc and uh, hopefully we'll have a neat semester. And from this vantage point, we'll get at least a gestured view of some of the major moves in the arc that is Western philosophy. I've picked representatives of three canons of Western thought from ancient to modern to postmodern. Um, I've skipped medieval. Um, I'll say a few words through the course about medieval philosophy. It's an interesting sort of development of philosophical thought. Um, but it, you're going to make your choices, right? So, um, alrighty. So, uh, it's, I'm just plug, plotting through the syllabus here. There's a grade breakdown. Um, there are going to be tests. These are going to be um, sort of longer answer questions. Um, there are going to be like five of them worth four points each for a total of 20 points. Um, there are going to be three of these tests. Um, points are percentage points too, so uh, I say it's out of 20, that means it's worth 20% of your final mark. There are three of these tests, so that's 60% of the course. Um, in these tests, like I say, since it's got to be a writing intensive course, I'm going to be asking you to write longer answers and responses to chunks of theory. I'll isolate either a section of text or a central idea or an argument from one of the videos and ask you to engage with it. Um, so, um, it's, so these tests, they're not cumulative, like at the end of the semester, I won't be asking you something about Socrates, right? if, to engage with the Socratic primary material, though Nietzsche does mention Socrates um, in one of the sections that we'll be taking a look at called the problem of Socrates. But that's a distinct argument that Nietzsche is making. So when I'm asking you about Nietzsche, I'll be asking you to engage with Nietzsche, right? So um, they're not cumulative. Once we're done with Socrates and Plato, we move on to Aristotle and Hobbes. Once we're done with Aristotle and Hobbes, then we move on to um, who is a Kierkegaard and Nietzsche. So uh, those are your tests. Um, each of these theories will be accompanied by um, sort of a leading question posted to um, a forum. I'll start the ball rolling. I'll record a short video, something like this, telling you why I think the question's an important question and actually sort of try to get the ball rolling for a discussion. Um, largely, this is where you have 
a rough workspace to work out your understanding of this material sort of collaboratively with one another. Right? Um, this is kind of a class participation kind of, but way easier to track for me and in an online sort of uh, engagement. It's, it's a lot of the talking that I do goes in this direction, but isn't interactive in the ways that I would like. Um, if you feel like uh, constructing a like a recording a video like one of these ones, um, please feel free to do so. Um, I've got some content policies which we'll get to in a second. Um, largely, keep it classy. Um, and, uh, there are some guidelines. Um, so, uh, but nonetheless, this is your rough workspace. I get the ball rolling, but then largely leave these discussion forums to you. Now that's 15% of your final grade. That's an interesting 15% of your final grade because you don't so much have to be right. You don't have to have the right answer. It's your rough work. I just need to see that you are engaging with discussions with one another and mobilizing your energies in an attempt to actually engage with this material. Right, so so that's what the forums are. I track both your posts and your replies to other people's posts. So if you're replying to other people's posts, that gets you credit for the grade as well. Um, and I will say that one of the main things um, that, that, that has the capacity to lower your grade in this course is neglecting these forums. Because between the discussion forums um, related to the theorists, and uh, the writing project proposal forum, that's 20%. That's equal to one of the tests on this in this class. That's a fifth of your grade. So um, be sure to do, it, it's essentially free grades, right? So um, this can very, very, very much increase your grade or if you neglect it, drag you down pretty far. So um, it's, I need, to see that you are engaging with the material as the material is going by. Of course, um, also I leave these forums open for the entire semester. Um, they come down at exactly the same time as your final materials are due in August. And then finally there will be a writing project. Um, the writing project is sort of short, it's four to five pages, a thousand to twelve fifty words. Um, it's going to engage you in actually formulating an argument um, using two theorists, so it's comparative as well. And it's directed on one of the course uh, toward one of the course overview questions. I give you a lot of freedom. Uh, for how you want to uh, formulate that argument, but nonetheless, um, you'll have a specific video for it. I'll say a few words about the, the specific assignments as they come up. Now, course policies. Um, I have a rather large policy on plagiarism that is uh, has two footnotes of its own. One, uh, because I quote a good hunk, of the Oakland University policy on plagiarism. Please feel free to look it up. Uh, it's an academic integrity. Um, it, plagiarism is a violation of academic integrity and the sanctions can be uh, quite severe. So I shall read it. Plagiarizing the work of others. Plagiarism is using someone else's work or ideas without giving that person credit. And by doing this, a student is in effect claiming credit for someone else's thinking. Whether the student has read or heard the information used, the student must document the source of the information. When dealing with written sources, a clear distinction should be made between quotations, which reproduce the information from the source, word for word within quotation marks, and paraphrases, which digest the source of the information and produce it in the student's own words. Both a uh, direct quotations and paraphrases must be documented. Even if a student rephrases, condenses, or selects from another's actual work or uh, another person's work, the ideas are still the other person's and failure to give credit constitutes misrepresentation of the student's actual work and plagiarism of another I another's ideas. Buying a paper using information from the World Wide Web or Internet, I love the redundancy there, uh, without uh, attribution and handing it in as one's own work is plagiarism. So that's what plagiarism is. 
right? Effectively, it's a form of theft, right? You're stealing somebody else's words, ideas, and claiming those as your own, right? But they're not your own. You've just stolen that, right? And um, from my perspective, I'm trying to understand how well you are able to engage with this material. If I get someone else's work that's then presented as your own, I don't know how well you've engaged with this material and therefore effectively you've done nothing of value for that assignment. All right? and so that's the one blunt sort of response to it. Right? Further, there's an interesting sort of nuance of my contract. Oakland University considers me an adequate judge of your capacity to engage with this material and your capacity to exercise uh, the skills that are outlined in the learning outcomes. They consider me an expert at this and an adequate judge, but Oakland University does not let me determine authorship. That has to be done by the Dean of Students Office. So the second I come across something that looks like plagiarism, I'm contractually obligated to pass it on to the Dean of Students Office. Another formulation of this, I mean, I'm an academic. Basically what I have in terms of something of value to offer the world is my words and my ideas. Now if somebody comes along and uses my words or ideas without attribution, they've effectively stolen that unique something of value that I have to offer the world by which I earn my living. That's not yours. It's mine or whoever's. Right? So effectively, right, what you've done is stolen somebody else's intellectual capital. Right? Now, um, this is pretty well the cardinal sin at a university, right? So um, it's, I have a zero tolerance policy on plagiarism. Any student suspected of this form of theft will be automatically passed on to an academic review board through the Dean of Students Office, which is just what I'm contractually obligated to do. Expulsion from the university is possible. Right? They could kick you out of school. They could suspend you for a semester. They could suspend you for a previous semester, thereby wiping out all of your grades and making all of your tuition dollars uh, worthless at that point. Um, and course policy is automatic failure, not of the assignment of the course. You do it once, you fail, right? So um, that's there to help you with your cost benefit analysis and um, you see, I, I don't like this part of my policy section. It's there because I've had a, pro a series of problems in the past. In fact, I've had, I've been at Oakland University a long bloody time. And so I think this is my 12th year and I've had pretty close to 50 cases go through the Dean of Students office, right? Like 50 of them, that's a lot, right? Um, Anything that's in the policy section is there because I've had problems in the past. And like I was saying at the beginning of the course, I like to solve a problem before it becomes a problem. The problem with doing this, though, is that I'm wagging my finger at you and you haven't done anything. I'm sure you're perfectly nice people, right? So um, I've now wagged my finger. Don't do it. We won't have any problems. If you just engage to the best of the, your ability with the material, think really hard about it, engage with the course materials, and present your, your, your own understanding in your own words, there's nothing here that's not doable. There's nothing here that's not, you're not able to do. And if you falter, contact me. It's what I'm here for. It's why they, 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 they give me the keys and pay me the big bucks. And if you believe either of those, it's, I clearly don't have, I'm not at the university. I actually don't have keys right now, right? And um, big bucks, I'm a philosopher. Um, as an old friend of mine used to say, uh, philosophy. I hope to earn as much as some poets. All right, so uh, anyhow. Right. <coughs> so missed assignment policy, it's expensive, or it's uh, not expensive, it's important in a semester that moves quickly like this one. Um, 
I've got a policy here largely because, um, you know, in say fall semester, I have somebody miss an assignment at the end of September and in, then in December try to address that. Um, it, well, there's not time. Um, I, I, I give an answer, an assessment key for each of these assignments. Um, and that's already out. So if I'm having a student at the end of the semester write something at the beginning of the semester, well, one, they've probably missed all of the foundational material that'll let them understand the stuff that came after it. Uh, and to, well, you know, you should have taken care of that in September, right? So I've got a policy here um, just, just to keep things moving along because there's a workflow that we all benefit from. If we just keep up with the material, then it'll be everything hunky-dory. But I understand, I understand better than most that life happens, right? I've had a number of life events that have interrupted my studies, my employment, uh, my semesters, that sort of thing. Um, I'm recently fathered to twin girls, one of both of whom have an extended stay in neonatal intensive care. Well, uh, that will mess with your ability to complete tasks effectively. So what do I do? I engage in dialogue with all of the people that I owe work to. I'm somebody you owe work to right and sort that out and what i found and what i try to produce myself is a position that that is very understanding when life happens and a willingness to work with you when life happens right so i've got a policy in the unfortunate event that you miss an assignment due date or a, a date due to <laughs> due date due to a serious illness or a death in the family um, or you know your car breaks down or um, you're in an accident or your pet dies and you just can't that day etc etc you must notify me via email or by telephone message with the departmental office we have a great administrator um, her name is Ann um, she gets me messages lickety split uh, either before the, the date and time in question, that's pre preferred, right? It's just, boy, it really looks like I'm not going to be able to do this here. I need to talk to you about this. Or within 12 hours of the missed deadline. Um, otherwise, I won't be able to offer an extension. Right? So I, that's not ridiculous. Something happens, you let me know, and we sort it out. That's, that's just, it's, I'm going to work with you. I understand life happens and I'm willing to actually comport myself to uh, be kind and compassionate in the instances in which life happens. But if you don't talk to me, I assume you've missed the assignment and I've moved on to the next one, right? Because they come very quickly. And, um, you know, if you're not able to stay on top of a very short and fast moving class, then um, you might consider taking it another semester when you have the time to engage with a class that's going to demand your attention like this. Right? So um, not trying to be a jerk here, just it's I'm going to work with you if you work with me. Right? So and I think that's fair and I think that's reasonable. Um, assignment submission. Uh, you're dropping files onto Moodle. Um, so uh, Make sure your files uploaded properly to Moodle. Uh, I frequently have problems with people submitting at the last possible second because I have dates and times that these are due uh, that are set if, if I'm on top of things automatically on Moodle and the, the assignment just kind of closes. It disappears. You can't submit anymore. So, oh, my file didn't upload on time. Well, that's your responsibility. You've got to get it in on time. All right. Um, and you've got to also double check that it uploaded properly, that you uploaded the proper document. I mean, I, I, I have people submitting accidentally files for assignments for other classes. Make sure I've got the right file, because if I don't have the right file, right, then I don't have your assignment, and then I've got nothing that I can grade in the space of that assignment. So that's 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 your thing, right? You've, you've got to make sure it gets to me. Just just like if 
you were submitting a hard copy of something in class. I know, I'm dating myself, I remember hard copy. I'm holding a hard copy, right? But nonetheless, just like if you were to submit a hard copy in class, you would hand it to the professor, making sure that what you handed the professor is in fact your assignment, right? And that way you would be sure it's there. Well, this, you upload it, you make sure it's there, and then if it's there, I have it, right? So, um, email. Uh, I try to stay right on top of email, but all of you have one way to contact me, and that's email. Um, and there are way more of you than there are of me. I don't anticipate a big problem this semester because um, there, you know, it's there are 25 of you enrolled in this class. Um, so it's, it's, I'm not as, um, well, I don't have hundreds of students, uh, over a hundred students like I do in a regular semester. So, um, but it's, I will tell you, um, I do have a whole series of medical appointments coming up, uh, for, uh, my daughter, a whole series of them, yeah, it's a busy calendar there. Um, so, uh, there will be days when I am not immediately available right it's i count one two three four five six of them something like that i know that's a lot for a semester but um i do have an iphone and i do write data so i i am if there's anything that's an absolute emergency frequently able to but nonetheless um email is not an immediate form of conversation, right? So if you don't get a response back in an hour, don't freak out. It's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I check my email a couple of times a day. I'm not, I'm not married to it, right? So um, it's it, also, sometimes I have five people that email me the same question, at which point I'll send out a blanket email to all of you. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to be efficient with my time. And if five of you have a question, probably 20 of you have that question. All right. So um, one more thing about email. Um, Oakland University requires that all course co correspondence should occur through your OU email account. So if you haven't activated your Oakland University email account, you should. Uh, and if you're emailing me about this, it, it, because technically I'm not even supposed to reply to an email that's not from an OU email. So if you're using uh, me.com or um, what are the other ones these days, Hotmail or something along those lines, I'm not supposed to reply to those, right? Uh, so um, use those email accounts. Um, and uh, one more thing about email. Um, you know, we like to think of it as instant, but sometimes I, I email somebody that's across the hall from me and it takes the better part of a morning to arrive, right? So, it, it, you know, nonetheless, these are all cautionary things about email. Um, I'm going to try and stay on top of it. There, there aren't as many of you as I'm used to, so um, that's good. Um, I should be able to, I shouldn't be too backlogged with emails, so um, should be doable, but um, don't freak out. Sometimes I take a little bit of time to reply. Um, discussion forum content policy. Um, like I say, it's keep it classy. Uh, it's intended for um, and should only be used for the discussion of the course material. Procedural questions like, are we getting that test back or how did everybody do on that exam shouldn't be on there. Um, that's, that's, that's a misuse of the forum and those, those comments and posts will be removed. Um, those questions should be directed to me or personally among one, one uh, among you guys, right? Um, also anything that is a derogatory or a personal attack on another student in this forum, I got a zero tolerance policy on that too. Uh, the post will be removed and some form of grade sanction or depending on the severity, maybe even an academic misconduct hearing may result from that sort of thing. So um, that's the keep it classy part. Um, and here I am with, with, with power to enforce that keeping it classy. 
I know that this material, it's going to ask you lots of questions about what it means to be human, um, what it means to have faith in God, what it means, what value there is to having a belief in God, um, what our most basic nature is, how political power should be exercised over us, etc., etc., etc. These are questions that are going to get you hot under the collar, right? But the idea is to focus on the material focus on the argument and not the person making the argument, right? This is rough space for you to engage with the material. So if I see you calling each other names or calling each other stupid or making inappropriate gender or racial remarks or anything along those lines, anything that in the way and any way could be interpreted as hateful, derogatory, or something along those lines. Um, it, again, I'm finger wagging, don't do it. And generally, I don't have a problem. I can think of two, maybe three problems that I had um, with this sort of thing. Um, it, it related to that, uh, if you're logged in and you step away to go to the washroom and your brother or your buddy or uh, somebody in your dorm or somebody like that winds up typing, you're responsible for that. You step away, you log out. All right. So if it's under your name, on this forum, you're responsible for it, right? So um, that's you, that's your person. You, 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 you should be responsible and protective of that, right? Um, and then finally, before anybody even asks, I don't offer extra credit. There's no extra credit for this course. So um, it's all sort of included, right? So, so there's that. Um, now, evaluation. All right, this is where I go over each of the sections. Like I say, there will be discussion forums. Um, I'm going to isolate a part of the position and introduce. Uh, you're expected to engage with each of these forums and enter into conversations with one another about this material. Um, the post should be substantial and demonstrate an attempt to engage with the material. So, for example, saying, I agree or this is stupid without additional comments will not get you the grades that you need to pass this section of the course. You have to say, well, I really think what Socrates is arguing here, and I'm not sure I buy that because here, here's an example, etc. All right. Um, or I liked what you had to say, but I think you missed an aspect of this. I might expand that to also include, right? You should be engaging with one another substantially with regard to the course material. Um, questions are perfectly acceptable. I don't understand this. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's the other thing. Can anybody give me a hand in interpreting this passage or this section or this idea? Right. That's that's all acceptable and you get grades for it. Right. Um, so um, generally, the idea here is to enhance your understanding of the material. Um, I don't post all that often, but when I assess the grade, um, I ask myself basically um, uh, three questions. Right. One, have you posted at least minimally once for each topic? And um, a quick word about minimums. If you do the minimum, your grades will be minimal. I'm telling you, like when I give you a, 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 the term minimally or at least, I'm telling you how to get a pass, right? It's if you, you want better than a pass in this course, do a bit more, right? If you do the minimum, you, 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 the outcome will be minimal, right? So, um, uh, the idea here is to get an ongoing conversation about the issues raised by the material at hand. Two, are the posts substantial? Um, that is, do the posts offered show engagement with the material? Um, it, frequently, some, somebody talks about something that happened to them that weekend and it, it doesn't have a clear connection to uh, the course material. Make sure it's got a clear connection to the course material and reflects the fact that you've thought about the issues raised by the course material. And then finally, are the posts timely? And um, yeah, this is 
uh, you know, something that I do in um, this class. So I leave these forms open right up until the last minute so that effectively on the last day when everything is due, what do you have due on August 25th? Um, you've got all of your discussion forms, you've got your third test, and you've got your final writing assignment. So that's 20, 40, 55 percent of your final grade uh, that you still have some control of right up until the last moment that it's possible to submit something for this class. Right? So if you falter early on in the class, there is I build in for you plenty of time to make it up, right? So that's why I do that. But um, you are better to stay on top of this. Every semester I have students that on the last possible day, at the last possible 20 minutes, post in each and every one of the discussion forms for the course, and it's the only time that they've posted throughout the entire semester. You see how that defeats the point of generating an ongoing, helpful conversation for everyone, right? So um, I'm asking myself the, 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 the third question, are the posts timely? Because if they're not, if they're very last minute, then you're not producing the value. You're not engaging with the spirit of the assignment, right? So um, hopefully these will be fun. All right. Um, I try to pick good questions or controversial ideas, and uh, there should be a lot of meat for you to engage with in these forums. But nonetheless, um, uh, that's how I assess them. Um, do 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 do. Oh, and I read every single post. Right. So just because I'm not commenting, don't think I'm not reading. These only work if I read them all. All right. Um, section tests. Uh, do, 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 do. Each of these tests will consist of two theorists, the first on Socrates Plato, the second on Aristotle Hobbes, the third on Kierkegaard Nietzsche. Um, and uh, so there are three tests, two theorists each. Each of the tests for this course will test only the section we're working on. I said that already. Uh, each test will consist of questions totaling to 20 points. 20 points is 20% and 20% of is what these are weighted. At, right. Um, typically five short answer questions asking you to define a term or make an important distinction related to a particular philosopher. These questions will be designed to test both reading comprehension, so you got to read. Uh, did you understood, understand what was read? It's basically my videos give you the greatest hits and the larger conceptual movement. I quote a little bit, but Nonetheless, my videos are not a substitute for reading. I expect you to read, and I'll be checking to see if you read. Um, do, 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 do. So reading comprehension and a more general understanding of the ideas that we've studied. So that is the readings. All of the video and all of the video material are fair game for these tests. Right. Uh, these tests will be po uh, posted to Moodle at the end of each section covered by the quiz. I indicate the dates below. Uh, you will typically have the weekend to engage with the, uh, uh, these tests, uh, with this test material, typo, look at that. Not a big deal typo, but no big deal. Um, your responses should be submitted through Moodle. Uh, due dates for each of the quizzes are indicated below. All right. um, no late assignments will be accepted except go back to the policy, right? If you have a conversation with me about, oh my God, life happened, I'll work with you, right? Uh, final writing project. Um, this will be a 1,000 to 1,250 word reflection paper, four or five pages directed toward um, a choice between uh, three course overview questions. In these courses, I ask you, um, uh, courses about human nature, about the relationship of reason to our desires, and um, you know the most basic underlying nature of truth. Right. Things like that. It's th those largely will be the themes that the, the course overview questions relate to. I can tell you that right now. All right. So you can start thinking about those. All right. Human nature, relationship of reason to the passions or desires, and epistemology. All right. 
Um, so uh, the questions themselves will be very general and I will likely require refi refinement for your particular reflections and argument. See, you'll be making an argument. You'll be taking a position. It's both Plato and Aristotle mischaracterize the act of knowing and really what it has to do is something more like this, right? Or um, Hobbes is correct and Aristotle is naive in his treatment of human nature, right? Um, Plato claims that reason could, should control the passions and Nietzsche has a better position that's more able to handle blah, blah, blah. I, I mean, um, the point is, don't agree with me because if I do this right, you won't know what I think um, because it's not the point. Largely, we're trying to it develop skills in terms of your making your arguments. So what I think isn't the point here. Right? We're not practicing the Bible beating sort of reverence method, right? These are not the, it's, I don't think any one of these theorists has it right per se, right? And um, unless you do an inordinate amount of research on me, you won't know what I think. And what's more, it's just not the point. So um, you're better to just make an argument and even a good argument that I disagree with, I can see is a good argument. Right? So um, it's it, it, you're better to just argue your conscience, argue your passion, right, in these things, right? Um, so as I say here, the, uh, the questions will be posed in midway through the semester. By midway, I mean uh, by August 1st. I've got it in my calendar to post all of the writing material material uh, uh, writing materials then um, including the the, the forum um, for your proposal All right so that moves us on to the next writing project proposal forum say that six times quick this forum space will be open midway through the semester I said August 1st um, when the questions are posted and, and is intended to be a public space to collaboratively workshop your project talks. Right? Uh, I've seen it happen that other students have hopped on there and commented, okay, I like what you're arguing about Aristotle and Hobbes here, but you might consider this argument as well, and it actually does wind up improving the student's paper, right? improving the student's argument, and it's, it's largely um, helpful for everybody. Plus, it's worth 5% of your final grade, so you may as well. Um, so, um, and it is intended to collaboratively workshop your uh, project topics. Your post should be substantial argument plans um, for your project and not one or two sentence uh, topic presentations. And it's not, this is the question, these are the theorists, thank you, right? That's, that's insufficient. It's, I grade these pass, fail, right? And if that's all I get, that's a fail. Right. You've got to say, I'm choosing these two theories because, and I think the point of distinction between them is here in the position I intend to argue is blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, you're also expected to help other students to workshop their arguments with respect to the assigned topics. And you note, know, once you post your proposal, you are not obligated in any absolute sense to it. Right. So you propose something and then came up with a better idea or came across a problem with the topic that you proposed, right? Well, refine it, dump it, do something else, that's fine. In fact, refi refinement of your position and alterations to your thesis claims is a sign of progress. Oh, another typo, I'll fix that. Um, so these uh, forums are gonna close um, August 20th at 10 p.m. I'll fix that on my electronic copy of the um, syllabus. Um, largely anything that I can tabulate before your final grades are due saves me time because I've got like 48 hours to get everything in after that. I've got to read all of your essays. I've got to grade all of your your tests. I've got to uh, calculate all of your form grades, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a busy 48 hours for me. So um, I close these early to get some of that work out of the way. Um, plus if you haven't done it by then, um, it largely you just write your paper in the forum, right? It's your papers due five days later. Um, so partially, what these uh, forum pro uh, the, the the project proposal forum um, is trying to get you to do is get thinking about your essay 
early, right? So that it's not just all done the night before, right? So um, instructional technology used on this uh, to be used in this course, YouTube clearly. Um, then on top of that, um, links to everything is going to be um, on Moodle. Oh, and it's your responsibility to keep update up to date with Moodle too. Um, I don't send you an email every time I add something. Right. Uh, you should be checking checking back fairly quickly. Uh, Mondays, I've got things set to um, be posted, so your new material will all appear on Mondays. Um, the dates indicated um, on the important dates section uh, are when your assignments will be popping up and when they're due. So um, my advice, I've got this conveniently located on one sheet of paper. I'd put this on my fridge or next to my desk or something along those lines and just print a copy of this page right, and just have it. Or plot all of these dates into your calendar or iCalendar or whatever you crazy kids are using these days. Um, so, um, important date, section test one, Socrates and Plato due Monday, uh, July 5th by 5 p.m. Section test two, Aristotle and Hobbes due Monday, August 8th by 5 p.m. Um, uh, I, I post those on Thursdays, the first two. Section test three, Kierkegaard and Nietzsche, due the final day that anything is due. I give you the whole day, um, August, Thursday, August 25th by 11.55 p.m. That's five minutes to um, midnight. The top uh, topics, topics proposal forum, and uh, submission portal for the final uh, writing assignment for this course. Um, will be posted midway through the semester. I said August 1st, so I'm going to do it August 1st. Writing project proposal forum will close uh, Saturday, August 20th at 10 p.m. That's when classes end and we get into the exam period, so um, I give you every last possible second there. Uh, the final writing assignment is due uh, Thursday, August 25th by 11.55 p.m., five minutes to midnight. And that's when the discussion forums close. Um, oh, that's, that's another typo. That says April, it should say August um, 25th by 11.55 p.m., five minutes to midnight. And then I lay out a schedule with the readings, with the video materials, with everything that you're responsible for week by week by week by week by week, right? And um, all of your dates spelled out to you again. Now, there's one last thing that I want to go through. Um, this is the last page of the syllabus here. Um, my grading scheme. Take a second. Soak it in. Your letter grade to percentage point conversion there is probably not what you're used to. This is frankly what just about every Canadian university um, uses. So when I think it's an A, I think it's within the range indicated here, right? But let me show you how it doesn't matter, right? When I go to submit your final grade, I take your letter grade based on the percentage point in the class. So let's say, just to illustrate here, you wound up with 82% overall in the course. Well, let's go to the percentage point to letter grade conversion chart. Oh, that's an A minus. Well, what's an A minus? It's a 3.6 to 3.7, and 82 is low in the scale of A minus. So you get a 3.6 in the course. And all the Office of the Registrar ever sees from me is the four point grade. So really it doesn't matter, right? So uh, this is here largely so that you do not freak out. Here, I'll put it up very close here. And um, it, it tends to, and it looks a lot more generous um, than what you're probably used to, right? So um, don't freak out if you see an 82, you don't have a B, you've got an A minus, right? Don't freak out if you're in the 70s because that's B range. Start to freak out a little bit if you're in the 60s because that's C range. And if you're down in the 50s, then um, something's gone horribly amiss and you should probably send me an email. Um, so, uh, or we should have a Skype meeting or something along those lines. So, uh, what do you have to do this week? Let me see. Let's go back to your thinger here. Week one, syllabus, course policy, overview, and a general historical introduction to philosophy, right? 
Um, the general introduction video, this video, uh, we're at the end of, so you've already got that covered. You can check that right off your uh, list. Um, uh, do, 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 uh, the, the welcome video, that is. Um, the pre-Socratics video um, will be posted. And then on top of that, there is sort of a very short cartoony video um, from a guy by the name of Alain de Baton, uh, who is going to tell you through these animations and funny little things um, uh, what philosophy is for. That's what you're doing this week. Next week, things are going to ramp up a little bit. You're going to have readings. First, read Plato's five dialogues and the sections titled The Apology and the Credit. Videos posted to Moodle. There's my Socrates video. There's Rick Roderick's Socrates and the Life of Inquiry, which is quite a good video. Um, philosophy, A Guide to Happiness, Socrates and Self-Confidence. That's Land of Baton again. So, three videos next week. Right? Then I do that for the next one. Plato. Read the textbook, Plato's Phaedrus, only to page 49. So that's 49 pages of reading. That's not ridiculous. I'm not asking for the earth, the sun, and the moon. Um, the videos to be uh, posted to Moodle. Uh, Plato Phaedrus video. That's my video. Plato's Theory of the Forms, Beginner. That's a very short, like 10 minute kind of video um, that um, I've been using for because it's a very good general introduction to the theory of the forms. And then School of Life Philosophy Plato. That's another one of those cartoony ones. It's very short, so it's not too bad. And then um, it, Section Test 1 will be posted to Moodle by July 21st. So um, that's how you read that, and that's how you know what you need to do when you need to do it. So um, I hope we have a good semester. Uh, it's summer semester, so I hope I don't take you away from the beautiful um, too terribly much, but um, nonetheless, uh, it's, I've tried to select interesting material. Um, it's going to be challenging, but I think it's going to be rewarding. And I look forward to interacting with each and every one of you this semester. Thank you and have good days, one for each of you.